start the recording, so this is the awkward pause between when I start it and when I actually read the statute. Um, here we go. OK. Good afternoon. My name is Jack, and I'm the chair of the Transgender Equity Council Policy Subcommittee. Before we begin, I'd like to note that this meeting includes the remote participation of members as authorized under Minnesota statutes section 13D.021 due to the declared local health pandemic. The city will be recording and posting this meeting to the city's website and YouTube channel as a means of increasing public access and transparency. Board meetings are public and subject to the Minnesota Open Meeting Law. A copy of our agenda was posted for public access to the city's legislative information management system, which is available at limsminneapolismn.gov. And Kenzie and Galen, do you have the agenda? Well, Gail, you're driving. Don't look at the agenda. I take that back. Kenzie, do you need me to send you anything or are you good on the agenda? No, I got the agenda pulled up. I'm good. Perfect. Is there anything either of you two wanted to add to what is already on here? <clears throat> I don't think so. Yeah, I don't have anything to add either. OK. And I am getting that message that I have bad network quality, so please just signal me if my audio starts cutting out at any point and I can turn off video and see if that helps. Um, but the first thing I had was I was just going to give a couple updates. I was at an LGBTQ leaders round table for Congressman Omar's office that Nikki who presented at the TEC recently helped pull together. Um, and there were folks from a ton of different orgs giving updates on kind of what they're working on. So I will also send this all out in the minutes because it's a long list, but I wanted to give you all kind of an update on what else is going on so that we can continue to figure out, or you all can continue to figure out where to position the TEC in relationship to some of that work. Um, so, and I will kind of organize this by org as best I can. Um, but Reclaim is the like policy piece they're pushing for is continued funding for sexual violence prevention in schools. And this is more state level, um, I believe. And then also continued funding for telehealth therapy, which was something that there was some bursts of funding to make it more accessible for small nonprofits to do at the beginning of COVID. But is a thing that many of their clients could benefit from even once we're in a point where COVID wise, it's safe um, for therapy to happen in person. Um, Out for Good, which is the queer and trans everything of Minneapolis public schools. That's not their technical title, but I could not come up with their technical title off the top of my head, um, is working on gender neutral bathrooms in Minneapolis public schools, which I'm sure Casey knows a decent amount about as well and inclusive sex ed curriculums for the schools. Um, and at any point, I will like go through all of this and then we can check in, but if at any point there's something you have more questions about or want to flag, like I want the TEC to jump on this, please also just jump in. I don't need to just like talk at you. Um, Black Immigrant Collective um, was talking locally specifically about the deportation of a lot of queer Somali youth recently. Um, and what, if anything, Congresswoman Omar's office could do to stop that. Um, and then outside of the US, the targeting that queer and trans folks are experiencing in certain refugee camps. Um, Black LGBTQ plus migrant project um, was talking about the need for immigration legislation that doesn't have criminal bars, um, with the kind of concern that the Dream and the Promise Act that are currently moving through federally because of bars around criminal history and access um, to like legal immigration status would exclude many black immigrants um, because we know the criminal justice system is racist, et cetera, et cetera. Um, out front, Minnesota is working on conversion therapy bans. Um, Quorum, which supports LGBTQ plus owned businesses, um, is working on support for LGBTQ plus BIPOC business owners, both getting access to capital and not having to pay taxes on their PPP loans, which is definitely a federal government thing and not a not a city level thing. Um, Minnesota Department of Health 
Shore, former TEC member, as you may have even heard them mention, is working on trying to actually collect sexual orientation and gender identity data with regards to all of the COVID work um, so that we can track the impact of COVID on our communities and where we're at with vaccines, et cetera. Um, just Us Health, which I also believe is in the middle of a name change like right now, but I'm blanking on what they're changing their name to, um, is working on supporting federal employees in accessing gender affirming health care. Um, the U of M Twin Cities has been working on more trans inclusive health insurance for the university for both staff and students, um, having screening questions that around trans inclusivity that determine which insurance provider gets their contract. Um, working on advocacy and needing more support around advocacy with building codes um, so that architects can stop denying the need for gender um, inclusive restrooms, dealing with anti-trans athletic bills. Um, and they have just passed a system-wide policy around trans inclusion that seems really, really thorough, um, and they are hoping to see more national non-discrimination laws that look more like the type of policy they just put together. Um, and then Root Springs, Minnesota was talking about um, Black queer land projects. There are multiple going on in Minnesota and support um, for Black folks. Owning land, coordinating farms and other spaces. Um, Transforming Generations, which does community support and especially, especially anti-violence work, particularly in Hmong communities, was talking about support for culturally competent mental health care. Um, Rare Productions was talking about support for LGBTQ plus artists. The Aliveness Project was talking about better access to PEP and PREP. And finally, Gender Justice was talking about trans exclusion in schools and sports, some of the bills that we know are going on. So I just threw a ton of things at you. Many of them are federal level, um, but I'm curious if anyone has any reflections, thoughts, comments, anything like that. I have a quick question. Um, I think you were saying Outfront is working on a conversion therapy ban, but I feel like that was just passed recently in in Minneapolis. So is that extending to the state or elsewhere? Yes, great clarification point. We passed it in Minneapolis when we couldn't get it passed on a state level. Um, and what they're working on now, because it still seems unrealistic on a state level with the current state Senate is getting other cities to pass it. So I think we're at seven cities in Minnesota right now who've done it. Um, hmm. They're working on, I want to say, like Burnsville and Richfield right now, maybe. Robbinsdale. I don't fully remember, clearly. Um, but it is, the goal is to get it passed in as many cities as possible, both so that there is some amount of protection until their state level and to get it to kind of ripple up to a state level. So what they're working on now is still mostly um, individual cities. Thank you for clarifying that. Hello, May. Welcome. Hi there. Good to see you. I was just giving a summary of some of the things different orgs had been working on um, at Congresswoman Omar's LGBTQ plus leaders roundtable. Um, and I will also send all of that out in the notes. Galen, were you about to jump in and say something? Yeah, sorry, you probably heard my car. Um, You're good. I was, I was curious. You said that the U was working on ensuring more trans inclusive healthcare options like insurance for students and staff. And I was curious if that, you know, you know, questionnaire, like what sort of things they're asking for to qualify as inclusive, because obviously insurance is a very prickly thing. I was just curious. That is an excellent question. Um, I don't have that in detail, but I am actually meeting um, with some of the folks who do some of the trans inclusion work at the U later this week. So I will ask that when I meet with them and follow back up with you all. 
Um, yeah, I was just curious because like there's there's trans inclusive quote unquote, but then it still doesn't cover all sorts of different care that like trans folks would be looking for. And so I was just trying to get a a, a, a sense of scope for how inclusive they were uh, trying to make sure their uh, provider is going to be. Totally. Are there any specific questions you want me to ask them or is it easier for me to just get their questionnaire and do it in that direction? I, I think you don't have to ask them anything in particular. It's it's mostly an issue of curiosity because like, you know, we have so many different things that uh, insurance providers will exclude as cosmetic. Uh, and so I'm just curious if they are even thinking about those sorts of things. Uh, and how they would approach that, because if they if they were thinking about those things, that would be super cool and it'd be fun to like use as a model for other organizations who are trying to pursue that stuff. Very much agreed. Thank you for that. Any other questions, thoughts, reflections? on any of this. Not nothing that I can think of at the moment. Sounds good. And I'm I'm skimming back through again what I just read and it feels for the most part really not Minneapolis specific but useful to be in continued conversation with organizations as things might be relevant. Um, in that case, I can move into giving updates for you all on some of the like policy priority areas you all have identified. Um, and May, do you did you get the agenda that's attached to the calendar invite as well? Do you have what I'm looking off of or do you need it? Yes. Perfect, OK. Um, so I don't have a ton in the transforming community safety conversation. Um, I don't have any updates on the um, mental health crisis response teams. I think that's still, like I told you when the request for proposals for those went out, and I think that's just still in the hiring process. I will follow up with those staff soon um, when I think it's a little further along. Um, the one thing I do know just happened um, is part of what got funded as a potential project in the budget cycle at the end of last year was working on an unarmed traffic safety division that would exist outside of MPD and do traffic enforcement separate from MPD without um, any weapons. And so what is going through council this week um, will, will be voted on city council this week is a staff direction, essentially an instruction to city staff to start figuring out what it would look like to create an unarmed traffic safety division, what the timeline would be, what the process would be, and report back to council by the end of June with that kind of high level overview. Um, so that will be voted on at the council meeting this Friday. It passed unanimously in the public health and safety committee, um, so is now going to council. That's the only update I'm aware of on any of that work that we all had talked about. Um, I watched the Public Health and Safety Committee meeting last week to see if there were any more updates for you all. Um, there was like a document attached to the agenda around MPD's new policies on less lethal crowd control weapons, but there wasn't a presentation or anything like that. Um, so, and the document was pretty high level. So I didn't I'm not bringing that to you all, but it, it does exist there um, if you want to see it. The council members were, a number of council members expressed that they were disappointed that there wasn't a presentation and were told that the city attorney's office had advised MPD to not speak publicly, publicly on their policies while there's pending litigation about their use of less, less lethal crowd control weapons. So that is where that's at, and that's why there's not much there that I can offer from having watched that meeting. Um, <laughs> I have something to say. Please um, go. <laughs> I have seen maybe a handful of 
like legislation happening in for like a city in Florida and I think maybe somewhere in Oklahoma um where like city city officials are or maybe it's at the state level so I apologize clearly I'm coming in uninformed but they're trying to make it so that um like cities can't defund their police department or cities can't like abolish their police departments is this ringing a bell like for anyone if i remember correctly they had done a story about this on npr and actually what they had done is okay. and again my word they had juxtaposed this against there seems to be two different types of um, avenues people are seeking for this type of policy. So like for instance, and I wanna say it's Austin, they have a thing where they did in fact vote to defund the police. They don't know what that means yet, but they did in fact follow through on it. And then for other places, um, it was more a matter of reinforcing the current infrastructure, right? So what they were doing was they were tightening up, they were tightening up procedures where it would be more difficult to defund the police, right? So whatever that was. So it, it kind of depends really on where the, um, the political mindset is. Um, and it also is about, um, who's paying attention to how the work is done. You know, and you can say that really about anything, gerrymandering or about, you know, how the Voting Rights Act is going. But for people where um, the, the law and order segment of their society has, um, let's say, a greater monetary value, right? The prison system is big. Um, there is a strong paramilitary presence. Then it's it, they see it as an attack on their livelihood, not just the system, the community, but a, a, but a real attack on their livelihood. And so that's why they're trying to shore up um, their, their police departments. Because it's not just about the, what they're doing to the community. It's also about what you're trying to do to them. Does that make sense? Did I explain that? Is that is that a good way of saying that? Yeah. 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 And also, I've been seeing similar, in addition to, you know, trying to make it next to impossible to defund the police, increasing, um, like, punitive measures for, like, riots. Um, and so... And the reason I bring this up is, I don't know, <laughs> is there a way that we can like prevent that legislation? Uh, and like, I don't necessarily think that that would happen in Minnesota, but if there is like something in Minneapolis where we can I don't know, put something into place that says like we're not going to increase punitive measures for grieving communities or something like that. And I mean, like also our city council said that they were going to defund, they were going to like reform our police department and that has yet to happen. So I don't know. I don't think I have a coherent thought but I have a lot of feelings. And I also have a lot of feelings about this unarmed like traffic division. That's, it seems like our city is trying to do the bare minimum and I'm, I'm just very frustrated. <laughs> so, again. Well, here's, here's the good news. I think it's fascinating. You know that you have a feeling as opposed to a, uh, an informed thought. You know, there are people who don't, who can't even make that distinction. That's a, that's a great point. That's a great point. I mean, I mean, seriously, there are people who cannot make that distinction and they confuse them all the time. 
Um, so I, I, I hear you. So yeah, there's a lot here. It just, it, it, it doesn't quite formulate up here yet. I get that. And I can, I can try to offer to all of that. Um, I don't know if there's any state legislation going on right now around like preventing things that would count as defunding. I feel like I heard that there's something proposed around riots, but I, or riots, but I honestly can't keep track um, and don't know necessarily whether it has a chance of passing. I can look into that and figure out if I'm making something up or not. Um, Actually, what you probably want to do is check, and I can't remember the, the very nice man, haha, <laughs> nice man's um, name. Uh, but one of the things that they got into was about um, when the government is giving money to rebuild after last year's civil unrest. Part of it was you're out of state, you're out of Minneapolis, or out of you know, the outer suburbs, whatever you want to call those people. I can't remember what they're called. They were saying how they did not necessarily want their money being sent to Minneapolis when, in fact, you know, the money was meant for all of, you know, Minnesota. But why should they have to be punished um, and give their money to people who are rioting, right? And people who are who are seeking to do destruction and that that's one of the things that they were talking about and i can't remember they had the discussion around how to allocate funds right and where it was going to go those dollars but i cannot remember the the gentleman's name and i say that literally the gentleman's name who was bringing that point up so that might be some place to to start that's that's and sorry i'm i'm being very non-specific but that is the best i can do right now you're good no that's still helpful and i can ask a friend in the city attorney's office as well about if there's anything that like can be passed on a minneapolis level to prevent things my understanding is it is there are a lot of legal logistics that i do not have the degree to explain around like when the state preempts the city and when the city preempts the state and i just have to ask someone else when that's the case but i can ask that question um, and the other, other thing I'll offer in terms of the unarmed traffic safety division conversation is both if you all would like want to talk to the staff who are involved in working on it, that is absolutely something that can happen. And at least in terms of who is bringing it forward in the public health and safety committee meeting, I believe that work is being led by council member Cunningham, who is the executive sponsor of the TEC. Um, and is always looking for TEC feedback. And so if you have a sense of like, here is what we as the TEC would want to see. Um, and I'm wondering, Kenzie, even if you wanna raise that in the next TEC meeting and we can leave some space for brainstorming there, I think that could be a great place to give feedback both to staff and council member Cunningham. That's like very, very specifically actually what the TEC is staff for. Yeah, I think holding some space in our next meeting for that makes a lot of sense. In my mind, I'm thinking, why are we stopping at unarmed like traffic control when we could unarm everyone? I feel like if we don't have lethal force, maybe we would have less deaths that's just my thinking so yeah i'd be interested to hear what other people think um it's very interesting that council member cunningham what did you say he is he is it's his project yeah and and i will say this is not the only thing that's happening like it is part of a larger project and not not, I believe, long term, the only people who are being unarmed, but yes, <laughs> being unarmed. We're just going to work with that language. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, cool. Um, yeah, I, again, still trying to form all of my thoughts, but I definitely would like to bring that up. And I can promise before the next TEC meeting to like 
pull the documents and get a little more of a framework of like, this is the bigger project this is a part of, so that you all have that context and can be responding to him or to staff or whoever with that full context, if that feels helpful. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, awesome. Any other questions, thoughts, reflections on the community safety piece? If not, do we have other um, other updates about community safety, or is 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 it just the unarmed traffic safety division? That's kind um, of come up. I don't have other updates because they're still in the process of filling um, the mental health crisis response teams, and that was the other thing we were actively tracking. But I am going to follow up um, with the staff in charge of that just to get a sense of where that timeline's at. If you're following along in the SharePoint version of the agenda, you will notice that I've turned it into the minute stock and you can see all my notes to myself in yes. here too. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. Great. Glad you're watching that. Um, okay. So, but I don't have anything else on that. In terms of housing then, of the housing policies that you all had advocated around, the only thing that's changed since I last gave you all updates is that the city is drafting some new renter eviction protections um, and will be bringing forth the legislation language for public hearing and for a council vote um, in May 2021. The goal is to get these passed before the eviction moratorium ends. Um, it's not legislation that could, it is, the legislation is not an eviction moratorium, um, but it is legislation that decreases the context in which a landlord can file for eviction and like increases the amount of conversation that has to happen between a landlord and a tenant before they can put forward some of the paperwork that like, even if the tenant won, won in court would still end up on their permanent record. Um, so they're drafting the legislation language, so I don't have legislation language to present to you. Um, linked in the agenda slash minutes is a link to the thing on a city council agenda that says they're drafting it and we'll bring it forward in May. Um, but that is where that is at. That is the only piece that has moved through council in any form since I last updated you all. Are there any questions or other things that are useful there? Okay. In that case, um, in terms of the sex work decriminalization work, I've been continuing to go to um, the decrim coalition meetings. They're working on ideally um, repealing the city's loitering ordinance, which um, can charge people for quote unquote with both loitering for like intent to sell narcotics and intent to commit prostitution is the language. So all based around police officer perceived intent of the person being charged. Um, is it a quick clarification? So is this, would this be like amending current loitering legislation or is this something that like wants to be added and we say like, no, no, this is hopefully removing current loitering legislation. Like what I just gotcha. quoted to you is an ordinance that people currently get arrested for in Minneapolis. Oh, OK. And the goal would be to exist. OK, OK, thank you. That's helpful. Yeah, totally. And so the coalition is working on a toolkit basically just explaining the purpose of this work to various groups of constituents who might be interested in it, bringing more and more folks into this conversation. And so what I promised I would ask to you all is just like, what are there questions that would be useful to have the toolkit answer? In the coalition meeting, we brainstormed a lot of things around 
like explaining why it's actually beneficial from a public health perspective for folks not to get arrested in these contexts. Um, explaining like what the loitering ordinance is actually being used for versus what it like theoretically is intended to be used for. Um, talking about this from a like sex ed perspective. Um, talking about like alternatives to policing and like what what exactly are the police doing in this context? Um, and then trying, we're working with the city attorney's office to trying to pull a bunch of data on like who's getting in charge, demographics, any information we can get. And so that's some of the stuff that's in, that was brainstormed as potential useful questions for the toolkit to answer right now. And my question for you all is, are there more questions that either like you have or you anticipate people you're connected to having or like pieces like pieces where this could be more trans specific in ways that would be helpful anything like that around explaining to folks why decriminalization why removing the loitering ordinance is helpful I don't think that I have anything to say on this right now, but I'll I'll think. I have to tell you, this is fascinating. This is my very first meeting. I don't know. I know nothing. I know this is just excellent. Yeah, we are throwing you into updates, May. So mm. glad that it's good. Glad to have you here. Mm. <laughs> There's a lot of work that the TEC is at least following and tangentially connected to <laughs> that you are getting all of the pieces of right now. Okay. <laughs> and if there are no additions, that is totally fine. Also, Galen, glad you're back. I'm guessing your meeting dropped or something. Yeah, apparently I lost service. Sorry about that. No worries at all. Glad you made it back in. Um, but totally fine if there are no additions. And as as an actual toolkit gets developed that can be distributed, I will be sending that out to the whole TEC. So you have so you can spread it to other partners and folks you're in connected to as makes sense. Um, and so you can see all the language that they've come up with. So I will continue to keep you all posted on that. Um, and again, if anyone wants to be in those coalition meetings and isn't getting the invites yet, let me know and I can forward you that information. Um, and then the last policy priority category I had um, was the transpanic defense. So for context, May, as we throw you into everything, the the goal is to ban what is currently a viable legal defense where someone can say, I killed someone because they were trans and I was freaked out by that. Um, uh, and what was the technical term for this again, dear? Trans panic defense. As in well, someone who was trans. Yeah. So there is there has been, this is something that would have to be banned on a state level. It is not a thing that can be addressed on a city level. Um, there has been legislation uh, introduced on a state level. Um, that's really about all I've got, which is where we were last time, is that legislation has been introduced on a state level. Um, again, the TEC technically has no official jurisdiction on a state level, but could, could always contact state representatives, either like one-on-one -on -one or via a letter naming kind of like, we advise the city of Minneapolis, we are not speaking as the TEC or the city of Minneapolis, but like, look, we are people who know things and please ban this. Um, if that mm. is, I know that was something you all discussed drafting at some point. I also know that the world has been everything and I, I have not done everything that I hoped I wanted to do, and I believe that's true of everyone else. So if the letter is still something you all want to do, I am happy to continue to like proof a draft if you write something or whatever would be helpful. Um, this is a real I don't have, thing. I'm still yeah, stuck. It's still most states. <laughs> These are 
are going to be the most fascinating Mondays I have, I think. Um, just on the, on the letter topic, I think the more I think about it, I would like to time if we do something with when it's actually being heard in committee and all of that jazz. Uh, and I don't even know if, if anything has happened with it at the legislative level. And so I feel like I feel like it will be more of a priority once it's starting to actually be discussed because right now we just have the legislation proposed right and that's it i believe so my experience is in tracking legislation on a city level not a state level so i tried to look this up this morning before this meeting got a little confused transparently and um but i will try to get a better sense of exactly what that looks like and let you know on timeline because i agree i think targeting it then would be ideal if possible yeah, the uh, legislative tracking system back in Colorado, because it's the only one I'm really familiar with, would say it would like update like on when it's being heard in committee and all that sort of stuff. And I don't know if the Minnesota version does that, uh, but you know, it, it always seems like anytime these sorts of things come up, you could try and contact people ahead of time, but it may be that the people that you contact won't even see it, you know, et cetera. And so until you know it's being heard in committee, it can be a bit messy to try and <laughs> reach out to specific people. Yep, totally. I will get someone to give me a quick primer on the Minnesota legislation tracking system and trade them like a primer on the cities in response or something like that. And I will keep an eye on this timing and let you all know. Um, I would offer um, Okay, I'm thinking this one through out loud. So <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you for your patience on that. If you were writing a letter to city council or the mayor in your official TEC capacity, you would have to vote as a TEC to take that action. So you would have to time it around being able to vote in a TEC meeting to do this. Although this is not technically in your official TEC capacity and you therefore don't need to vote to take this action, um, I don't think it could hurt I don't believe there is any just from a like moving systems as they're supposed to perspective. Um, and so if you even wanted to report back in the next TEC meeting, just like we are planning on writing a letter, obviously not in our official TEC capacity, when like when this comes through committee, making that announcement now in advance, because my guess is we may not have the like months lead up of time to plan this with the whole TEC. So I just want to make sure anyone who wants to be a part of it gets looped into that conversation in advance so you all can just go when it is likely to get to get heard in committee soon, if that makes sense. So maybe not a vote, but just I want to make sure that this gets reported back on in the full TEC um, and that folks have the opportunity to plug in if they didn't already. Thanks for listening to me talk that one through out loud. I couldn't get through it in my head. Yeah, makes sense to me. Perfect. Does anyone else have any questions about any of the kind of policy priority areas we just talked through? And Galen, I will send out minutes because I know you dropped off in the middle of some of this, unfortunately. Awesome. That would be great. Totally. If not, the two other things I had flagged for the agenda, and I think the last policy meeting, we talked briefly about the Trans Equity Summit and the idea of like, how do we connect storytelling to policy? Um, Amir, who's a former city staff member, um, and Jay, who had joined the call and is a staff at Family Tree Clinic, had both been kind of brainstorming around that idea. I wanted to bring that back up. If there are no further ideas, that's totally fine. But if anyone's like, yeah, I want to think about a summit workshop that's about storytelling, oral history, policy building out of that, anything like that. I wanted to pose that so we could brainstorm a little more um, and connect anyone who might be interested in that conversation. And if not, or if everyone's like that's out of my wheelhouse, totally fine as well.
you want to know how to connect narrative to hmm. let me think through that one i'm willing to take that on I, yeah do some thinking do what feels good for you um and if you want me to at some point i can connect you to the other two folks who also we're not necessarily planning a workshop or anything yet but both also wanted to think about it to see if the three of you want to think through mm -hmm. any way to build a workshop out of like supporting folks in connecting their stories their narrative to policy building or anything like that Okay. Um, and the one other thing I will offer as we all continue to kind of brainstorm out loud in the last summit planning committee, the two kind of areas of potential summit theme we talked about, um, one was around like civic engagement and how to make change. And one was around like joy and celebration. And let's not just talk about the shitty statistics. Um, I think this potentially connects to both. I'm, I'm seeing a piece. Or I think the thing I'm thinking about right now is I feel like I have at least seen workshops in the past around like, how do I take my like negative experience, tell it in a powerful way and advocate to policymakers from it. And I'm curious about what it looks like for folks to take celebratory positive stories related to transness and turn those into policy as opposed to only here's how I was discriminated against. Let me testify my trauma for you. That is not a fully formed thought. I don't think I have the answer. Like I couldn't lead that workshop necessarily, but wanted to draw that connection as it came through my head in case it's useful for anyone else. Hmm. Yeah. And at a certain point in the next few months, we will put out a call for workshops for the summit. And so maybe that's the point where we really flesh this out. Um, and then the last thing I had was just who wants to report back on this subcommittee meeting at the next broader TEC meeting. I'm realizing that we need to actually remember to assign that in advance. I can do it. I've been taking notes. Sweet. Thank you, Kenzie. That is all I've got. Does anyone else have any other questions or things they want to check in about before we wrap up? In our minutes, um, will you, I know there were so many updates from the LGBT round table if you could just like bullet list those yeah i think yes. that'd be cool yeah you've been watching me take minutes when you all are talking i'm typing when i'm reading off of other docs i'll copy that over later before i send out the minutes i don't okay. get my talking points into the minutes in real time sweet, um, sweet, sweet. but yes i will get all of those updates in there thanks for checking cool anything else If not, thanks you all so much for being here. Thanks, May, for joining for your first subcommittee meeting as we just like threw you head on into this. <laughs> Excited to have you here. Like I said, I will. This is definitely going to be my most interesting Monday. I think this is going to be great. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, 